care about them or I sort of try and educate them or whatever. I'd love to live in a world where people could be stupid without pissing me off. But that world is not a world with a government, right? Right. Because in a government, stupid people rule your life. And when stupid people rule your life, like Plato said that the, the price of not getting involved in politics is to be ruled by your inferiors, right? Whereas the price of getting invo involved in politics is to become morally a morally compromised sociopath, right? So it's like, I mean, I mean, he tried to get involved in politics in Syracuse and got sold into slavery and almost killed. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Maybe I'll just go back to geometry and boys. <laughs> but so I, you know, the, 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 the price of the state is to be ruled by bribed idiots claiming virtue. Right. People who don't have a clue about ethics or, or, or politics, who don't know anything about history, who couldn't even define to you what a government is. They rule. This is the vast majority of people. Ask them, what is a government? Uh, dome building. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're cute. And really dangerous. <laughs> right? I mean, asking the government to solve your problems is like asking a blind sharpshooter to perform your appendectomy from about three miles away. <laughs> I mean, he might hit you. <laughs> But you won't be happy. The best you can hope for is it doesn't even get close to you. The bullet, their power, right? Mm -hmm. So I can't make that go away. But I can tell you this. That people, one of the reasons people love having a government is... They don't have to have any brains at all for people to be interested in them. I'm a voter. You must pander to me. I don't got to learn nothing. I can make an X. So, pander, bastard. <laughs> I sure beat reading a book. They don't have to learn shit, and everyone panders to them. Silken-voiced Obama will come out and monotone his baffled way through a teleprompter or two and pander to every single one of their prejudices and fears and stoke their resentments and you know well i just want to get things done stop that please so without the state idiots would sink into the well-disturbed obscurity that they have earned either they're idiots biologically, in which case we have sympathy, or they're idiots by choice, which is the majority, in which case we have rational contempt for them for refusing to use the greatest gift the universe has ever bestowed upon organic matter, which is the few pounds of human brain. So without the state, who would care about the opinions of idiots, right? Right. And so idiots love the state because then non-idiots have to pay attention to them, have to pander them, have to try and change their minds. Why the fuck would I want to bother taking your average IQ 98 mouth breather and try and tell him about the free market? Like what a completely ridiculous thing that is to do. That's literally trying to pump an ape full of lattes and teach them how to do the ballet. Why? Well, because we kind of have to try because these mouth-breathing monsters control our destiny with their idiot X, right? Right. But Steph, I don't, I don't draw a distinction between people and the state because people, and as far as I understand it, are the state. Right. And an intelligent person, say, like, it's, it's well established that people of lower IQ are more likely to get on and stay on welfare. Why? Because an intelligent guy understands a sticky Venus flytrap when he sees one, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, I might solve my problems in the short run by going on welfare, but it's just going to make my life worse in the long run, right? So smart people don't go on it, and dumb people do. It's not, I mean, obviously, there's corporate welfare, it's a whole difference, but just talking in general welfare, right? So 
I agree with you, but but try, you take the state away, and the idiot's inconsequentiality will be revealed because no politician is going to come into their auto body shop and say, "Hi, I'd like to talk to you. I have an IQ about twice yours and an ethics about one quarter yours. I'd love to talk to you. Tell me about your day." Who, what do you think about foreign policy? Do you think we should have done X? What do you think about the minimum wage? Tell me, tell me, tell me. I'd love to get your vote. That looks like a cute baby. Right? I mean, nobody would be doing that if it wasn't for the state, right? Nobody would be interviewing them, right? <laughs> there would be no man on the street interviews in a stateless society any more than it's like, well, Dr. House, we seem to have a very difficult problem here. This person seems to be infected by bat wings that stretch the length of their nipples and we can't figure out where they came from. Well, I don't know. Let's get some non-doctors in here and let's all vote on it. Experts hate and have contempt for most normal people because most normal people think they're experts on things they don't have the first clue about. Right? Average people are an insult to experts. Because they think they're superior to experts. And this is nature of the beast. You take the state away, that becomes pretty stark, pretty clear, pretty obvious, right? I recognize expertise because I'm actually an expert in something. I'm an expert in philosophy. So I recognize expertise in others because I know how fucking hard it was to become an expert in philosophy. Because it was so ridiculously hard and took like 40 or 30,000 hours to become an expert in philosophy, when other people know stuff and know it well, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> okay, I defer to you. You know your shit because I know how difficult it is to know some shit. So if you know some shit, I may be a tall mountain, but I get that there's a huge valley between me and another tall mountain, right? Someone's really good at physics is like, whoa, they put you put your 30,000 hours into physics. I am not telling you anything about physics, right? Mathematics, whatever, right? You've been studying Latin. <laughs> like I remember when I was in graduate school, a professor was telling us about a guy who knew ancient languages so well. Like he could just look and he could just read and read and his he would actually be writing ancient Greek, uh, ancient um, Latin, just reading and, and just <laughs> not crazy. I mean, that takes a serious amount. Uh, I'm an expert at that because I can make squiggles. Right? I mean, this is the average person. So most people never get competent enough at anything to have any respect for competence at all. Because it's a lot easier to be incompetent and think you're competent than to become competent. Because when you become competent at something, you become humble. Because you know, I, I will never be competent at other languages. I'm, I know like 10 computer languages. I will never, ever in my life, I'm not going to have a six pack and I'm not going to have <laughs> competence in another language. Because I know it will take me about 10,000 hours to become competent in another language. And I get that that's not really going to help the cause of philosophy very much relative to continuing to work on what I'm doing. I... And the people who are really good at that kind of stuff, fantastic. I, I, amazing. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to make random noises and think I'm speaking some other language fantastically well. So um, the reason I'm saying all of this is that people have adapted to thinking that they're important because they have a vote, right? My vote is the same as yours, is a fundamental delusion of democracy, Idiots, mouth breathers, incompetent, uneducated, TV addicted, candy crush playing idiots have exactly the same votes as people who are deeply knowledgeable, well educated, um, who know what they're talking about. Now, this, of course, is completely ridiculous, and in no other situation would this occur. But one of the reasons why this system works, obviously, it works for dumb people because it makes them feel like they're competent. And by dumb, I don't just mean like they've got a low IQ. I mean, you can be uh, hugely smart in one field. It doesn't, <laughs> one of the delusions of competence is thinking that makes you competent in other fields, you know? It doesn't, right? I mean, I'm, I'm competent in one, maybe two fields. Does not make me competent. In fact, it makes me recognize how incompetent I am at other fields. 
so there can be very smart people who think that because they're very good at physics or very good at comedy or whatever, that they're very good at everything else and so on, right? And it's all nonsense. So recognizing that the current system is a massive psychological subsidy to ignorance. And if that system is removed, then people's ignorance will be revealed and people's inconsequentiality will be revealed. That's what I if want. If you don't learn something deeply. That's what I want. Of course, but I'm telling you why you're not going to have it. Right, I understand. No, that. no, I, I want it too. But I'm telling you why you're not going to have it. You cannot take you cannot take the illusion of competence away from people. They, they won't give it up because they know deep down that they're inconsequential. Like if you don't become deeply good at something, you will disappear from this life without leaving a trace. I mean, and that something could be being a husband, being a wife, being a parent. You deep, become deeply good at something. And you will disappear from this, or you will disappear from this life without leaving a trace. And most people, they want heaven and they want to vote because they're not important. Because they don't connect with other people. I mean, think of the first caller's mom. I mean, she's obviously left huge craters in people's lives, smoke, huge smoking craters where families were, including her own. And what's she going to leave behind? How many people do you know about from the 14th century? Anyway, it doesn't hugely matter. But what I'm telling you is that it's more than just telling people about the free market and the non-aggression. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. But fundamentally, people have adapted to a society where they matter because they vote. I'm a citizen. I'm matter, right? I mean, you can't even get people to recognize that their sports team choice is completely arbitrary and doesn't matter at all. As the first guy says about the tailgating, I try and stay away from sports events. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't even get people to recognize that this sports team is complete, <laughs> completely ridiculous bullshit, right? Because people aren't taking risks in their lives, the risks that lead to virtue, the risks that lead to knowledge. Because every time you try to acquire a new piece of knowledge, there's a significant possibility you're going to completely fail. And even as you try to master new things, you will fail. And even after you've mastered new things, you still need to keep failing, which is why I try to make new arguments, why every time I do a speech, it's a new speech. Because you need to have the capacity for failure in order to be doing anything new or noteworthy or important. And most people don't want to take the risks. And so what they need to do is they need to have risks by proxy, right? I hope my sports team wins. I hope my candidate gets in, right? I hope my favorite band reaches number one. I hope the numbers come up red 22. I hope we'll win this poker hand. Hope this girl will go out, right? This is all proxy risk. They won't take the real risks of learning and, and becoming virtuous and taking on the fight of good against evil. They just take on these proxy risks. And Dungeons and Dragons is a form of gambling, right? I roll the dice and see if I win. It's another kind of proxy risk. So what I'm sort of trying to point out is that if you try, the reason people fight so strongly for the state, even though the state sends them to war, even though the state sends them to prison, even though the state sends them to shitty schools, even though the state strips them of their money through inflation and debt. The reason they fight so hard for it is that, like the old Sarah Bernhardt show, she says, without you, I'm nothing. The state, the country, the, na the nation, the collective, the Borg, is who they are. And if you try to take the state away from them, they will have no idea who they are. And they will fight to retain this system because the system tells them who they are. It gives them an identity. It gives them